Well, overall, I would believe that uh, we lose a world-class player and we gain a world-class player. So, how efficient will that work? Uh, that will be down to the performances of both players, you know. But uh, overall, I think uh, Mikitan has the qualities to integrate our game, and uh, but is based a lot on movement and technical quality. And I think he has the attributes, he has a good team uh, attitude as well. And uh, I'm confident that it will uh, work and he can play in uh, all kinds of positions on the flanks. He can play through the middle as well. So I think he's uh, uh, very versatile and it should help us to uh, be very efficient going forward. Do you see him maybe lining up in the same team as, as Mesut Ozil or is it a case of uh, being able to interchange between No, they can play uh, together as well, of course. He's not available for, for tomorrow night's game, but who's, no. who's likely to come back in? Uh, we might have uh, Ramsey back in the squad as a test today. And uh, after we have the uncertainty about Nacho Monreal, who uh, left the game during uh, the game at Crystal Palace. And uh, hopefully we'll be as a test this morning as well. And uh, Olivier Giroud and Danny Welbeck? Olivier Giroud is a fraction short, Danny Welbeck. Uh, a fraction short as well. He's perhaps not um, a direct replacement for Sanchez, but what else do you expect Mkhitaryan to, uh, to bring to your front line in terms of your options? I would say uh, quality of uh, runs, quality of uh, creativity, you know, he, can, uh, he uh, can be very penetrating with his passing and with his runs, and of all uh, technical stability in our team and experience as well. He knows what, is, is, uh, what it is to fight at the top level. You said a few days ago that you couldn't understand why anybody would want to, want to leave Arsenal. Why do you think Alexis Sanchez did? Do you think it came down to, to money in the end? He, uh, I said here, you know, that it was uh, he's 29 years old, going 13, 2018 and uh, that it was maybe his last contract and of course the financial aspect is important. He could combine both. I think he goes to a great club and he gets a great contract. Uh, 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 so you can understand that pro professional player uh, he could, could combine both aspects. You brought in one player as you mentioned. Um, are you, how confident are you you can complete a deal now to bring Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang here to Arsenal? What was him, maybe, <laughs> standing on the line? Uh, confident or not confident, I don't know. I'm, uh, at the moment, we have done, uh, we are not close to do any deal, is it Obama Young or anybody else? Is it fair to say that with Dortmund needing a striker, would you be prepared to allow Olivier Giroud go, going the other way? So Look, uh, the negotiations are not as far as that. How close are they then? You never know how close you are, you know. This is a kind of uh, things that uh, uh, at the moment is one of the possible uh, uh, movements, but we have other things in mind as well. We have uh, plenty of opportunities on, in different positions, you know, so uh, the final decision is not, uh, is not made. How important is your, your thinking in terms of Aubameyang playing with Mkhitaryan? They've played together previously. They seem to have a good relationship. No, you look at uh, at players who what is their qualities, what can they give to the team, and uh, of all, uh, when we are good players, we can always play together. You know. Uh, reports as well that Danny Welbeck could be going to Besiktas. I know he's been injured uh, against Crystal Palace, but is there anything in that at all? No, I want Danny Welbeck to stay here. And in terms of other business, is it more likely to be loans in and out to younger players, squad players? Depends on the opportunities we have, you know. We can uh, buy players, we are busy on all fronts. And uh, uh, so overall, I think uh, we are open-minded. Uh, every, so every opportunity we have to strengthen our squad will take. And uh, if people want to buy some of our players, we have examined that. Players who have less chances to play, we have done it. You know, who deserve to play because they are great players who have left us. So after that, uh, we we'll see at the end, there's still uh, a lot will happen in the last week as, as usual on the transfer market.
You'd have seen Deloitte's Money League published yesterday. Mm -hmm. Arsenal finishing, I think, fifth of all the richest clubs in terms of uh, mm -hmm. revenue, 20% up on last season. But you spent less in terms of recruitment than all the other teams in the top 10. Are you sure that this club is doing everything they can to keep pace with the best teams in this country and in Europe? Yes, of course, but you have not to forget that we have as well uh, financial restrictions from the banks because we have built the stadium, you know, and uh, so it is important. We have to respect a financial plan. And uh, as you said, we work very hard to become richer because uh, and we achieve it. After that, we have to spend the money uh, the most in the most intelligent way we can on a transfer market that has become a bit out of control. But I believe as well, uh, despite all the financial uh, superpowers that we have in the league and in Europe now, I believe it's very important that we keep uh, the basis of our focus on uh, on uh, getting people outside, out uh, from inside the club. And uh, I'm convinced that uh, the way the football is going is maybe not necessarily only to buy uh, this huge amount of money players, but uh, have players in your team who care about the club uh, and uh, have a sense of belonging and the pride of belonging to the club. I would rather encourage a club to push more on the quality of our youth work, what we are doing, than uh, going into a way where it's only about millions and not so much about values. How important is this game to you tomorrow? You come close to winning the League Cup a couple of times but never, never quite got there. It's an important game and uh, we want to go to the final. We have an opportunity to do it at home against Chelsea. I think the two teams know each other very well. The first leg was very blocked. The second leg was will certainly be more open because at some stage uh, the teams will have to open up and uh, to try to win the game. So it should be much more spectacular than the first one. Just one defeat now in seven against Chelsea. Um, do you think you found a way of playing against them? You're always cautious to say that because uh, I think uh, the two teams uh, are very close to each other every time they meet and the form of a day can be a decider, you know, and uh, uh, the strength of the motivation on the day can be a decider as well. So I think uh, it has always been very tight and uh, uh, there are two good teams who know each other well now, so it's very difficult, uh, it's very unpredictable. Um, after me, I, with Sanchez going and in the past, Van Persie going and, and obviously Fabregas going, are you worried that Arsenal are seen as a bit of a selling club in some way? No, I'm not worried about that. And uh, when the players get to a certain age and they want to go, you have to respect as w that as well, you know. It, uh, as I said, uh, uh, all these players had a uh, short contract to go and uh, at some stage you have to make a decision or you uh, uh, commit for four years and, uh, or not at an age where you have to think about it. Um, Sanchez apparently is going to get around about £400,000 a week in wages, something like that. Um, are you worried that some of your players who are coming out of contract this summer, like Mesut Ozil or next summer, might also in the end, just go for money rather than footballing ambition? Sanchez combined both. Uh, so what I think, uh, at the end of the day, uh, we are a serious football club with responsibilities and we want to spend the money we can afford, you know. And then the maximum we can afford, we do. But as well, you have some decisions to make at, uh, at some stage. Are you responsible in your management or not? And uh, if you cannot afford, you have to say no, we sorry, we can't do that. Um, the game tomorrow night, do you see yourself as a favourite because you're at home? Or do you see Chelsea's favourites because if they get an away goal, and you've gone through to a final before an away goal, um, then it puts them in pole position? Uh, well, I, I, honestly, I don't see any favourite in, in, in that tie. If you look, as we just spoke about in the last seven games, it was always very tight. So you could say what comes out is that... Uh, uh, there is no real favourite, but uh, we are at home and we feel strong at home, and so we want to take advantage of it. And just one more, you talk about youth players before and bringing mm -hmm. players in and 
who care about the team. Um, the likes of Ainsley, Maitland, Niles this year has done that. Jack Wilshere has done that in the past as well. Do you see that as being... For, don't forget you will be Bellerin. You know, we are the only team who plays with uh, four or five players uh, in the starting lineups. So with players who come out from the club, if you look at uh, uh, well. But don't you think managers then have to trust their young players? I mean, you may well do, but... Uh, what I mean, if you look at the instability now in the Premier League, uh, you don't encourage managers to take gambles with young players, you know, and uh, uh, when they make their team on Friday night, they will go more for security and security is experience uh, than to give a chance to young players. I hope yes. Uh, I have no doubt about his uh, attitude, his commitment, his desire to do well. He suffered a little bit maybe from uh, the competition he had there. And uh, <coughs> overall, that's his challenge and my challenge as well to get him to express uh, completely his talent that we know is absolutely uh, right because he has done extremely well. And uh, so he has a new challenge that uh, we want to help him to be successful in it. How much do you think his time at Manchester United affected his confidence? Have you seen that? I will know that. Uh, I don't know that very well. I will know much more about <coughs> that in, uh, in the next two, three weeks. Okay. I know he obviously can't play tomorrow, but do you see him slotting in straight away, or will he need a couple of weeks to get up to speed? Or? I, that depends, first of all, on the team performances and uh, on his own uh, fitness and performances in training as well. Just, just on Sanchez, there, there was a suggestion that maybe about a year or so ago he, he virtually agreed a deal to stay here. <laughs> Look, I don't want to come back on the history of these negotiations, but uh, uh, maybe one day. But uh, uh, Sanchez is a great guy and uh, has always been committed. Where did the negotiations go well or not well? It has never affected him. I, I would just to, to like to remind you that I took him to the hotel on the night uh, before the Crystal Palace game and he was completely focused and ready to play the next day. Until I told him, look, uh, you can go home, the deal is over the line. So what he did, but uh, no matter how the negotiations went, he was always fully uh, focused on football. Your smile suggests that it was <laughs> You can <laughs> interpret my smile, you know <laughs> me well enough for <laughs> years, so I leave you free to, to do that. I mean, because in his interview that he's given at the United, he's talked about how he spoke to Ferguson years ago and he wanted to play for the United. So yeah. Well, maybe it's true, you know, uh, I have no problem with that. Uh, but Sanchez is a professional player and uh, he's a guy who loves football and when he's on the football pitch, uh, he has given the maximum for Arsenal and will do the same for Man United. He was before uh, at Barcelona, you know, it's never, they are not small clubs. He, he has been uh, in big clubs and he knows that in the big club, uh, you to survive, you have to give absolutely your best. It's quite rare to see two clubs swapping players like that. But Very rare. How, how important was it for Arsenal to get a player in return for Sanchez instead of just cash? And do you think it's something that could be become more common because of the way the transfer prices are, are going? It could happen, yes, more, uh, because the transfer prices are very high. And uh, we were as well in a position where the player had no value in three months, you know, or four months. So. Uh, uh, that is, of course, uh, important in your decision as well.